Hello, everyone. My name is Brayden. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Personal Robots Group at MIT Media Lab, supervised by Cynthia Brazil. Um, and nowadays, there's no doubt that generative AI changed our way of imagining the future uh, of AI with us. We started to think, how can AI um, help us in any way they can? We start to think about how AI can afford us. But there is a difference between AI's capabilities versus affordances. Affordance requires a contextualized uh, discussion of uh, AI's capability and its meaning relative to human. And our group designs pedagogical agents that interact with children. And we're particularly interested in how we can leverage large language models' planning ability in social interactions to expand agents' social affordances that promotes personal growth. For instance, how we can help children to be more verbally expressive. Uh, come to talk to us uh, about how, I, how we can responsibly expand AI social affordances with large language model. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Isabella Pu. I'm also a student in Dr. Brazil's personal robots group at the MIT Media Lab. And in this day and age, I think creativity is only getting more and more important. I mean, the next generation of students is growing up among these crazy technologies that we couldn't even dream of not too long ago. And so it's really important to teach them about AI and how AI can support their creative process in order to prepare them to solve the world's problems using these tools in bold and innovative ways. And to do so, I'll be showing a few different projects we're working on, including some curricula, like one where we teach third through 12th graders about ChatGPT. So what is it? How does it work? How is it creative? And importantly, how ChatGPT's creativity is different from yours or mine. We'll also be showing some curricula about image generation, where we talk with children about how to generate creative and also emotional images. And we also look at some hidden biases in these tools. We'll also be showing some tools that uh, are activities where kids work with AI to be creative, such as a storybook co-creation tool where kids are using generative AI to write and illustrate the stories of their dreams and also being pushed even further by the generative AI to think more creatively and more outside the box. And that's really what creative AI learning is all about. It's about helping kids with generative AI reach their already wildly imaginative dreams and also further their imagination even more. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Shannon Shen, and I'm currently a PhD student at CCL, working closely with David Sontag and Yung Kim. My research is about human AI collaboration. So today, I'll be showing a personalized educational robot in, term, in the settings of a group studies. So imagine, in the current ChatGPT, you can talk individually to OpenAI, but in your classroom, you're working closely with your lecturer, with your professors, as well as your classmates. So how to enable ChatGPT to help in this scenario? How to imbue ChatGPT into your like, most familiar interface and then see how it can help with you in the classroom? So in today's like, demo, I showcase like, what will happen if you bring your AI closer to your most familiar interface. And then I show like, how you can, from like, lecturer or both student and lecturer's perspective, to use this agent more um, like, efficiently for preparing class materials. So for example, as a lecturer, you can easily create or simulate different TAs based on need. And as a student, you can create different types of agents to help with different aspects of your PZs. So come to check out our demo, and then thank you so much. Hello, everybody. My name is Wanacho Wana. I'm an MIT class of 2020, but right now I'm currently teaching STEM in DC at a public school and doing research. And my research is on AI-assisted observational learning. So how do we assist students in learning from their role models? So when I was growing up, Barack Obama was a big speech model for me. And a large way I learned to public speak was by observing how he spoke and trying to mimic those patterns. That process is actually very difficult, but we can personalize that process, make it interactive, and make it seamless for a student at an early age to emulate their role models, actually try and mimic their role models, and in the process, lower their public speaking anxiety. 
And so that's what I'm working on right now. That's what my demo will be on. Excited to tell you all about it and also talk about how Gen AI can really make this process very interactive and personalized for students at an early age. So looking forward to showing you all later. Good morning, I'm Joanne Leong and I'm a PhD student at the Fluid Interfaces Group at the MIT Media Lab. We all know that we each bring to every situation our own funds of knowledge and interests. And in my work, I'm looking at how we can use cutting edge technologies such as generative AI to tailor our learning experiences even outside of the traditional classroom. So some of the questions that I'm asking in my work is how can we foster a growth mindset using self deep fakes? Or how can we use augmented reality filters to help people overcome developing public speaking skills? Or thirdly, how can we use large language models to make uh, the act of learning vocabulary more fun? So if these kinds of questions and uh, projects interest you, then please come and say hello at my demo station outside. Hi, uh, my name is Siddharth. I'm a postdoc at iFi, the Institute for AI and Fundamental um, Interactions. So at iFi, we work on, uh, amongst other things, uh, generative AI for scientific discovery. Uh, but here we'll be showcasing a demo uh, more focused on education and outreach. So the concept started uh, about seven months ago with an April Fool's joke, uh, where we built a website to um, emulate Jesse Thaler, uh, our director, who is just on the panel. Uh, it's called Chad Jesse T. Uh, so it knew about you know, Jesse's papers, uh, tried to emulate uh, some of his mannerisms, knew about his group at MIT, and so on. So kind of drawing from this concept, um, we got the idea of uh, creating such chatbots for scientists through history. Uh, with the goal of, um, kind of ironically, um, showing a more human aspect of, of doing science. Um, so here we're presenting um, OpenAIMA, um, which lets users uh, chat with a virtual version of J. Robert Oppenheimer. Um, so it, again, you know, kind of talks like Oppenheimer, is known to have uh, talked, knows about his papers, his experiences, um, and so on. So one of the uh, broader goals of this kind of project is to showcase um, the personalities and kind of stories of scientists who've kind of been historically um, excluded um, uh, fr from science just because of you know the history of the field. So that's where we hope to go. Um, but just because of uh, you know the the spot Oppenheimer has in popular culture right now, that's what we uh, we started with. Uh, so we've showcased um, OpenAIMA at uh, public schools in the Boston area, the Cambridge Science Festival. Um, if there's things you've always wanted to ask uh, G. Robert Oppenheimer about science, the Manhattan Project, uh, please stop by. Thanks. <laughs>